Well, hello there! This is Gary Gnu from the Great Space Coaster, and you're watching Mega Podtastic! We got something for you! We got something for you! 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 It's something Megapod shiny! It's wrapped in Megapod plastic! Put on your Megapod jammy! Good morning, Mega Podlings. It's Crazy Joe, and I got an interview today. I'm really excited. You guys know me. You know there are a few things in the world that get me as excited as Star Trek and Muppets, and I'm always happiest when we have uh, puppeteers and especially the Muppet performers here with us. And we've had we've been fortunate to have a, a few, and we got another one. And this is a big one. If you've been paying attention to anything going on in 2022, you know Fraggle Rock is back, and I haven't been shutting up about it because I'm pretty excited. And I'm really excited by, by today's guest. We've got the one and only Mr. John Tartaglia. Whoa. who is not only the uh, the producer and the uh, the driving force behind this new version of Fraggle Rock but Gobo <laughs> so welcome John it's great to have you here thank you I'm glad to be here thanks for having me absolutely hey, uh, I was doing a little bit of research for this interview and I was shocked to learn that uh -oh. you're a you're a local guy uh, I, I'm I'm sitting here right now in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania. You graduated hey. from high school in Fort Washington, yes. which I didn't know. I didn't know. Upper Dublin High School. Yeah, yeah. I lived there from when I was about uh, like eleven until eighteen. So, so that begs the question: What is it about the Philadelphia area and the Muppets? Because Fran Brill is from around here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bill uh, Beretta's from around here. Yeah. Bill and Brian met at Sesame Place. I read you worked at Sesame Place. Sure it's, it's like, this is like a hotbed of Muppet activity around here. Yeah, I don't know. There's something in the water or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, I think it's also probably maybe just, well, it's luck, definitely, but probably maybe because <laughs> we're so close to New York, it's close enough that, you know, I mean, that's how I started working was, was uh, when I first started working for Muppets, I was you know, taking a train or or being driven to, to New York for the weekend or for a couple of days on, on you know, high school vacation or when I had like, you know, a holiday off for high school, that's when I would work. So it was close enough that I could do that. And my parents actually, when I got older, started trusting me at like 17 to kind of get there on my, on my own. They would, of course, check in, you know, obsessively with me the days before cell phones. They would be like, call me from a payphone the minute you get to, you know, Grand Central Station or whatever. But um, but yeah, so I, maybe that's it. Maybe it's the proximity. I'm not sure. I just think it's something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes me a little sad that I didn't uh, get into puppeteering. I got to tell you, I was one of those kids who didn't know what he wanted to do when he grew up. And then yeah. uh, now now I do. And I feel like I've, I'm 46. I missed the boat. So <laughs> I mean, it's never, been... it's never too late. There are there are several Muppeteers who, who got into it later in life. You know, the, some, uh, the original friends so you know dave goals and kathy mullen and stuff like that you know there's people who found it further on so it's it's possible <laughs> now my daughter my stepdaughter uh she's mm. 14 years old i first met her uh when she was five i, I met okay. my, my my now wife and uh she learned my wife learned of my great love of muppets and she said to me you know there's a show on the disney channel that jackie loves called Johnny and the Sprites. You got to check yeah. it out. I, I had never seen the show. So then I started watching it with them. And, and the way she pitched it to me before I saw it was, it reminds me of Fraggle Rock. Mm -hmm. So, and and now the, the one thing I, I've learned about you is Fraggle Rock was what drove you into puppeteering. Yes. So it seems like it, it, it's all come full circle. Well, yeah. I mean, well, yes, it definitely has come full circle <laughs> in, a, in a very kind of mystical way that I could have never imagined. Um, but, you know, it's funny. Yeah, Giant the Sprites was definitely inspired by Fraggle Rock. And, you know, I had this this sadness that 
fantasy series for kids weren't really being made at the time. I and mean, you have to remember this was 2005 and, and almost everything like on TV for kids was very, you know, which, which one is the box, you know, point to the letter P, you know, it was much more curriculum driven. It was much more one-on-one uh, -on -one interactive, you know, like blues clues, that kind of world. And, um, so fantasy for kids was out the door. And I grew up with just that, right? With Fraggle Rock and Care Bears and Smurfs. And, you know, every show you watch as a kid, at least in my era, was was these were these fantastical worlds. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring back with Johnny and the Sprites was was some sort of sense of magic and another world. And and it's absolutely inspired by Fraggle Rock, you know, and 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 openly so, you know, uh, the idea that there's another world living nearby. That you have to know how to get to, and and that they're, they're these fantasy creatures. I mean, I just I just loved that idea of 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 giving kids a a, a a place that's magical that could be in your backyard or could be anywhere. You know, it, it's a great show. I, I think anyone who's never seen it, I, I I'm telling you, send a tweet to Disney Plus. Be like, hey, get this up there because I know I don't know where it is. They got to bring it back. I guess they're waiting. They're gonna roll it out slowly. <laughs> they better bring but, it back. But uh, you coming from a background in puppeteering, to to be the 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 face of the show, the the the, the human actor, was that um, was that an adjustment? Well, it was funny because so when when Disney approached me, I was in doing Avenue Q on Broadway, and the president of Disney Channel came to see Avenue Q and loved the show, and he asked if I ever wanted to work with with them on a series because he, he knew he saw my background I and mean, if you read my bio it was like sesame street all these things i'd done you know that were very, obviously very puppet based and very family based um and he said would you ever want to create a show and i said uh, i said i would my gosh i'd be honored to i never thought that would happen at i was 26 at the time i was you know never thought that would happen at 26. and then he said um uh and, and then we started creating it and the original version was just the sprites i did not I was not in it. It was just kind of this ma this magical world in a forest somewhere full of these creatures called the sprites. And I had all the, the names in my head. And then one of our executive co-executive producers uh, on the show and co-creators on Johnny and the Sprites said, well, you need to be in it. I was like, what? She's like, no, they, clearly they want you because he saw you in a Broadway show and said, do you want to make a show? You need to be in it. And that's actually where the idea of me being on camera came from. I never thought about that. It was, it was a, this wonderful producer jill who came up with it so i was like oh okay and that's kind of how the show you know evolved and i'm really glad it happened that way because i think it 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 turned it into a whole other show it allowed the kind of broadway quality come to come through and um but i never expected that and so it was very weird for me because as a puppeteer you're always behind the scenes you're always below camera and i'd worked with so many celebrities on Sesame Street where, you know, they're the face on camera and we're the puppets. And it was, it's hard for some people to adjust to not looking at the puppeteers or to not looking at the monitors. And for the first time I was in that position where I was like, oh my gosh, like, like I'm acting with my friends and I'm performing to these puppet characters be performed by my puppeteer friends. And I can't look at the puppeteers for the first time. So it was, it was, it was a, a totally new experience, but I, it was joy. It was two years of just joy. That, that was one thing that, I've been fortunate enough to visit the set of Sesame Street twice now. And mm -hmm. I always hear people say, oh, you never look at the, pu you never think to look at the puppeteer. You're so, you yeah. look at the puppet, you look at, and I think that is true for most people, but being a Muppet fanboy, yeah. I'm sitting there like, it's Grover, it's Eric Jacobson, because <laughs> I'm just as big a fan of him as, you know, so it's like, you knew both. <laughs> Yeah, the the nerd in me couldn't separate, but but still, yeah, you know, I don't think most people do that. <laughs> so, no, we're like, and, I, and you know what's funny is I was happy about that. You know, I mean, the Avenue Q was a shock to me to suddenly be the face of something and to be and to be known because I was one hundred percent okay with the idea of just being an anonymous puppeteer for the rest of my life because that was that's my passion. I loved it, and I love performing these characters and letting the characters be the stars. So it was an adjustment when all of a sudden with Avenue Q, we were we were public figures and we were faces that were out there. And it was like, this is not what we, we never expected this. So, uh, so yeah, it was definitely a change. But, but uh, you know, obviously I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, let's let's talk about Fraggle Rock because that's yeah. that that's the push right now. We got to get people who haven't checked this out yet to check it out. All episodes streaming now 
on yes. Apple TV Plus. Yeah, I I am not finished the season yet because I'm not a binger. I want to savor these. Like I really want to, and it's and it's a family appointment. We got four. We got two kids, two adults. We don't watch an episode of Fraggle Rock unless everybody's home. Like, you know, the one oh, kid in gymnastics, where it's like, oh, no, Jackie's got gymnastics tonight. We can't watch Fraggle Rock. She's not here. You know, it's like things like that. So we got to, so it, therefore it's taken us a little longer, but I think it's more enjoyable that way because you're not like, oh, look, I had one great weekend and now they're all gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You, you know what? I'm so happy to hear you say that. First of all, the fact that you're savoring it because, uh, as a kid who caught, I, I found Fraggle Rock right at the end of its original run when it was on, you know, weekly and it was prime time. And it was like, you, you waited with bated breath for the next episode, the next week. Right. And there was something yeah. exciting about that, knowing that I, I forget what night it aired, but that that was, that night was coming. So I love that you're doing that because it does make it really fun. Um, and, and I love that it's a family thing for you because that was definitely the goal. You know, the original series was never, a kid's show, you know? It was a show made for any age and purposely so. And and if you talk to the original creators, they'll tell you that, that they never, you know, we're, we're so we're so um, demographic based nowadays where it's like, this is for two to five. This is from, you know, this is for 18 to 24. And at least at that time, the idea was let's just make a great show that appeals to everybody and that everyone can watch together. And that makes me so happy to hear that that's happening with your family. I hope it's happening all over the place. <laughs> well, we are loving it. And I got to ask how this came about because since the nineties, we've been hearing Fraggle Rock's coming back. There's going to be a Fraggle Rock movie. Uh, Ahmed yes. Zappa wrote the script. It's going to be a movie. Wow. The, the Fraggles go into outer space to look for uncle Matt. Like we hear all these plots. It never happens. No. It never happens. Now, now, all these years later, you you finally made it happen. What? How, how? What? What got this going? How did this finally, after all these years of false starts, finally turn yeah. into a thing? Well, I mean, I, mean, I think you said this, but it's true. I am the biggest fan of the show. You know, I was obsessive as a starting out in my career in puppetry, but also just as I love the show. I know every episode of the original series. I know every song. I know every character. To a, to a crazy point, like I know everything about the show. I love it so much. And um, so when I started working more behind the scenes at Henson, um, you know, I, I've been a puppeteer for Henson for years. And back in 2015, I came out here to the West Coast, to Los Angeles, to work on a show called Word Party, which is on Netflix. Um, and that kind of started, restarted my association with the Jim Henson Company um, as both a performer and then as a creator. So, so I was behind the scenes and working with the amazing uh, uh, president of television, Hallie Stanford, who's one of our co-executive producers and a, a dear friend of mine. And she turns out to be a huge Fraggle Rock fan too. And, you know, the movies were in development and, you know, listen, it's so hard to get a movie made nowadays. It's so hard. Um, and Hallie and I were always kind of like the kids, like poking around the corner, like, what about a TV show? Um, and, and you know, this is this is a few years ago before you really saw the love for bringing back bringing back properties that people have such a fondness for. And then Henson started this amazing association with Apple, and turns out everyone over at Apple are also huge Fraggle Rock fans. And so we had a meeting with them, and they said basically, uh, Jamie Ehrlich, who's the head of television, was like, "What about Fraggle Rock?" And Hallie and I just looked at each other like. <gasps> Here we go. And um, and that's really what started it. And then, you know, we 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 started talking about developing what what could it be and you know, how could we bring the show back? And and then the pandemic happened and everything shut down. And I had the Fraggle five puppets in my office at Henson. And uh at the time there were only those five. There was no other Fraggles, you know, that were usable. And something in my gut when we were told to kind of, you know, go home and not come into the office for how we all what we all thought it was going to be weeks, right? Uh, something in my gut said, don't leave these puppets here, take them home with you. So I took them home. They locked down the lot. And then while we're at home, you know, kind of all figuring out what's going to happen in the world, uh, the wonderful Tara, Tara Sorensen and Apple said, could we create like a series of shorts for, for kids and families on how to deal with, you know, being separated, how you can still be together even when you're alone and uh, and then that's what spawned Fraggle Rock Rock On, which is a series of shorts that we did. That was the first time the characters really came back, you know, in a story-based format. And that 
People loved it. I mean, it was crazy. I I was hoping people would be happy, you know, online, and we and, and but I mean, it was like an explosion, and that's really what what propelled the series. So it was it was just this fraggle love. It was like it was like the fraggles were like underneath the surface, just waiting to come back out, and then because of uh, fans like us, like all of a sudden here we are. Well. The new show is is absolutely fantastic. I, one thing we, we got to talk about is the sets. Yeah. Uh, the original Fraggle Rock, you know, there were a few basic sets. I think, like, we had uh, Gobo and Wembley's Cave. We had the, yeah. the main area. But a lot of it was green screened. Yes. And uh, your show looks so much more lavish than the original show ever did. It's it's uh, It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, how how large are those sets? They they are they as big as they look on television? They're very large. Yes. They we had three giant sound stages in Calgary, and when I tell you that we filled them, we did. I mean, and I remember, uh, I went up to Calgary uh, to look at this the, the, the sound stage ahead of time before everything was was loaded in and built, and I remember thinking like, there's no way that these puppet sets are going to fill these giant sound stages. There's just no way. And then, of course, <laughs> they did. And and you know what it was is that the, the original series was shot at this wonderful small studio in Toronto that Jim used to love to shoot at. And um, you know the Great Hall was set was probably the size of a living room. I mean, it, it wasn't you know, and also because it, at that time you didn't need to fill as much frame, right? Like right. what you saw on TV was square, and it was it was a little bit you know you weren't trying to to make 8K. You weren't trying to make 8K pictures and glorious pixels and everything, you know. So it was just a different time and a different uh, way of, of designing. So Tyler Heron, who's our production designer, came in and gave us this incredible pitch on using light and using, uh, you know, making the rock more vibrant and more colorful. Um, you know, that's the other thing is if you watch the original series, it's so easy for us as fans to forget that, you know, the thing that we know and we love so much you know, it's it's a different time, and what kids are, are watching today is very different. You watch a kids series today; everything is bright and flashing, and and cut, 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 cut. And so we're competing against that. So one of the ideas was to brighten up the rock and just bring a little bit more color and life to it. And Tyler did such an amazing job. But I, I will tell you, when I walked into the soundstage and saw the Great Hall for the first time, my jaw just dropped. In fact, I have wonderful footage of Karen Prell, who of course performed in the original series as Red Fraggle, um, who is also the biggest Fraggle fan in the world and and so in love with the show, walking in and seeing it for the first time and she was just like, <laughs> she couldn't believe it. <laughs> so so it, it is, to answer your question in a very long-winded way, yes, it is as, it is as uh, large and beautiful and, and full of things that I hope we can show if we get the chance to go back and do more that we can show that you didn't see the first season. Lots of little nooks and crannies and cool little side caves and things that he built into, into the set. It's it's really an incredible place. Well, you, uh, as long as we're talking about some changes that have been made, I, I'm going to ask the burning question that I haven't heard answered yet that everyone's been asking. Yes. Why did Moki change? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Moki changed even between uh, the, the Rock On specials and, uh, yeah. and this. Like, I saw yeah. the first trailer. I'm like, they all look the same except Moki. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it is a good question. And and here's the here's the truth. The honest truth is it's a, it's a combination of things. I mean, one is, you know, if you look at the original series, um, you know, Gobo went through a huge redesign but, uh, in the middle of the first season, right? He had a very distinct look in the beginning, kind of a pointy nose, and he had these, these uh, the feathers that could kind of rise up on his eyeballs. And, and he wore that kind of dark purple jacket and everything like that. And then that all went away after like episode 13, I think. And all of a sudden this brand new Gobo appeared that no one ever addressed, right? So so puppets get remade, you know, Ma Gore got remade, the original Sprocket from the pilot to the uh, series got remade. So things do change um, and that's very normal in the world of puppets. Miss Piggy looks very different than she did in the first episode of The Muppet Show. Gonzo, um, Gonzo's a big Gonzo, yeah, I mean, <laughs> almost every main character right. has gone. Um, and part of that is style. You know, with Moki, you know, she's a, always been a really interesting character. I mean, I think everyone loves her, but it's funny, you know, people had a hard time identifying her. People said, is she the mom? Is she an old woman? Um, uh, I remember some fan, uh, apparently at some 
Fraggle talk back back in the day was like, who's the Albert Einstein character? <laughs> like, you know, because of her original hair. So she's always been a difficult character uh, from a marketing perspective. She's been a diff difficult character from an identification place. Um, and I think, you know, at the time she was, she was very much like that heavy cardigan and the hippy dippy thing of the sixties. So it just felt like she needed a refresh and she needed something new. And, and also we wanted to make her really funny. You know, uh, the original Moki was intentionally not as zany and fun as the other characters. She was a little bit more, uh, sometimes to a fault, you know, character wise was, was a little serious. And, and that's, we just wanted to give her a little bit more excitement, a little bit more life. So, and we had the opportunity with the amazing Donna Kimball, who's taken over the character, who is such a funny improviser and is such a funny performer to kind of, you know, let her bring something new to the character too. Um, so the more we talked about it, we decided that, you know, let's, let's really get Moki more into being in touch, new age, you know, all those things we love about Moki, Moki are still there. She's still poetic. She's still artistic. She's still into, you know, crystals and, and meditation and all the things that we love about the original Moki. But it was just time to give her kind of a, a youthful rethink and to make her a little more fun. And, and, and then a little, a little girl of today could look at Moki and find something, you know, relatable in her. So it, yeah, so that was the, that was really the reason it was just, it was kind okay. of, and what was wonderful was, was how much the team that had worked on the original, some of whom are still part of this, you know, reboot were like, yes, like everyone felt strongly that this was the way to go. So that was nice to have that blessing. Right. Um, so, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes when you grow up loving something and you have to rethink it for today's times, it can feel like, Oh, you know, like, but it's, it was the right, I think it was the right thing to do. And she, she was the only Fraggle originally who had live hands. Uh, yes. But, but now I think Icy Joe has live hands, right? Icy Joe and Large Marvin are the, are the okay. only two Fraggles that have live. And, you know, that was the other reason they gave her live hands was besides the fact that she was going to be very tactile and picking up props. It was also, it made her look older, right? Because the other, the other puppet's hands were like half of the size of Moki. So it gave her, so it was just once we knew that Moki wouldn't be as old and we knew that she wouldn't be as, um, kind of hippy dippy you know it just felt like this was a, a we gave her rotted hands so she could be a little more expressive in that way and and we just kind of we just kind of uh gave her a new vibe you know our, our what i always say is like she she felt the creative uh spirit of the rock and decided it was time for a change and that's so kind of what what it really was i guess and that's that i guess leads nicely into my next question which is uh, when, when did you decide to do it as a reboot? Because I mean, I think when I heard Fraggle Rock was coming back, my assumption was it mm -hmm. was going to be the same world we knew before, just continuing on. But when I saw the first trailers and said, "Oh no, we have a new doc," mm -hmm. and uh, and Uncle Matt's going out for the first time, I'm like, "Oh, so the, so this is completely new." Uh, yeah. were, were, was there talk about doing it as a continuation, or was that always the plan? We talked about everything, you know, we had this amazing uh, kind of, you know, meeting of the minds of both, you know, the, the, the new, uh, the, the, the new folks working on the, on the new reboot and some of the original creators and we called the Fraggle Gaggle and we all got together over Zoom at the time uh, and it was probably like 20, 25 of us and we just talked through everything. From, you know, for those of you who were in the room with Jim Henson when he, when he said, this is what I want to create, what did he say? Tell us everything. And then while you were making the show, what was the hardest part of making the show? And what, what were your hopes and dreams if the original series had continued on? Um, and so we absorbed all this information. And the more we talked about it, you know, we realized that if you do a prequel, then there's a lot of things you have to set up, which kind of prevents adventure, right? Because if you're, if you're meeting the Gorgs for the first time, then there's a lot of history to set up there. Um, and if you're before traveling, Matt makes the discovery to outer space, then you've also got to establish the original doc and Jerry Parks, the amazing original actor who played doc is no longer with us. So we didn't want to recast that character as the original doc. So then we thought, well, what if you do a sequel? If you do a sequel, the problem is the original series so beautifully tied everything up, you know, all by the end of the first, uh, the original series, you know, the, the Fraggles and the Gorgs and the Doozers and, and Doc and Sprocket, everyone was getting along. Everyone knew about each other. There was no more um, mystery. There was no more uh, conflict, right? 
and, right. and you remember the end of the original series, you know, Doc moves to the desert with Sprocket and now there's a hole and to, to Fraggle Rock and all the Fraggles know him, there's no more fear. So it's, it's hard to kind of keep a story going from that and create new episodes from that. So that's where the idea came from. Well, let's just rediscover the world, you know, and let's find a, a Doc who's gonna really appeal to uh, kids of today and be a great role model, a great inspiration for them. Um, you know, people's, even people's relationships with their animals have changed. You know, the way we treat our animals now as children, it's very different than it was in the early 80s. You know, you know, Doc, <laughs> Doc wasn't always the most loving owner to Sprocket, like leaving him overnight or forgetting to feed him and, you know, all those, you know, which is hilarious, but it's it's like, it's different now, right? Like, like we, we, we call them our fur babies for a reason. We treat them differently. Right. They're, they're like our best friends. So we kind of rethought that relationship. What if, what if Doc was a young woman trying to make her way in the in the world who's very science-based and a little more practical um and and you know and her relationship with sprocket really is very best friends you know uh, lovingly codependent um and then that just kind of opened up the idea that then then we had the ability to go back and and rediscover these relationships and retell the gorgon fraggle relationship and retell the doozer fraggle relationship um, and it just felt like it was less limiting and, and also it gives kids today a chance to completely rediscover the series as their own, you know, and which is important. You don't want to make, I think that sometimes with, with reboots, um, there can be a tendency that if you weren't a fan of the original, you feel totally left out because you're, right. you're hearing, you're hearing references and things that, you know, and seeing characters again, that everyone's freaking out that are back and you have no idea who they are. And then you, it kind of pushes you away from it. So it felt like this was the most inclusive way to bring a brand new audience to the show, which is very important. You know, it can't just be us fans, right? It's gotta be a brand right. new audience. And then also let the fans in too. And then we discover that we could kind of bring back songs and characters that we love as fans. We have to reintroduce them, but you know, we can still enjoy them. So so it felt like just the the healthiest way to make the show feel modern and and refresh it without having to really make massive changes and and you know. And do the Fraggles age? I don't know if we want to see like, you know, you know Gobo is like an 80 year old man. I'm not really sure. but <laughs> Well, I, we only had about a half hour and I'm looking at the time and I can't believe we're, we're right up on it. I, I feel like we, to you. I'll, I'll, I'll talking. I love talking to you. <laughs> do, do we, do we have the time? Can we talk a little longer? Yeah, I mean, if if you gotta time. go. I... I got five more minutes for you. Okay. All right. Well, let, let me. Okay. <laughs> will you come back again in the future? Maybe. I would love to. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, well, let me let me ask you this then. I, like I said, I'm I've three episodes to go, so maybe yes. maybe there's something I haven't seen yet that, that okay. you don't you don't want to spoil. But I'm wondering if in a season two or maybe the next three episodes, some of some favorite characters who haven't shown up yet, there's a chance we might see them again. Okay. I'm thinking of Side Bottom, okay, conv convincing John, okay, and and I know we got a little bit of a variation on them but cantus is my sister-in-law's absolute favorite muppet yeah. is there any chance that we might see those guys again you won't see them in the first season um you know and it's funny uh, side bottom is totally on the table because dave goals loved playing side bottom and he's such a fun part of brewer in fact we we talked about side bottom and i think it was literally just a, a, a like we couldn't fit him into the first season you know in fact that is something that's wonderful about this group of writers and, and the originals uh, creators is that there's this love of like, oh my gosh, there's so many characters to mine from that we could bring back. And we actually just ran out of episodes to do that. Um, you know, Convincing John and, and Cantus, we talked a lot about because they're such great characters, but you know, they were, they were written for Jim. They were absolutely written for Jim and they were Jim. And uh, the, the, the great Jocelyn Stevenson is one of our writers this year, who of course was uh, wrote on the original as one of the creators of the original series. Um, she wrote uh, uh, Cantus for Jim. And it just felt like that someone could absolutely, you know, do an imitation of that character and bring that character back. But it just felt like we'd be, we'd be doing a disservice by trying to recreate the magic that Jim brought to those characters, you know? Um, and so, so that's where Jamdalen came from, is we're like, well, we knew we wanted to kind of bring back, you know, the musical group now called the Troubadours. And those puppets are, are, I think those designs of those puppets are so beautiful. I mean, I have to say up close, I was geeking out holding those puppets. I was like, oh, they're so beautiful. Um, and and Raleigh Krusen, 
who's one of the original Muppet and Fraggle builders, rebuilt uh, who's now Jamdalin. And it's basically, it's very similar to, to the original design of Cantus. So what we kind of figured out was that Jamdalin is like the spiritual cousin to Cantus and has the same, you know, philosophy and kind of hippie pulled back energy that, that Cantus had, um, observational. Uh, we definitely would love for him to come back again. He's, he's just a great, and David Diggs, who does the voice of Cantus, is the biggest Fraggle Rock fan. So he was like, or sorry, not does Cantus, does Jamblin. He is the biggest Fraggle Rock fan. So he geeked out when he got, when he saw the puppet and saw, you know, how much he was very similar to Cantus. So, so yeah, we, we did talk about that, but it just felt like those characters are so Jim Henson up and down. That. Yeah, and it just felt like let's not do an imitation of that. Let's let's let those characters. You know, we we would we would joke on set like convincing John's off. You know, in the in the Crystal Caverns, convincing these. You know, we 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 kept his spirit alive. <laughs> well, I I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us, John. It's been amazing you. having you here. Uh, you asked great questions. You asked like great like fan questions. I'm like, oh yeah, let's talk about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I had. Um, I had uh, David Newell, um, Mr. McFeely from Mr. Yeah. Rogers on once, and he uh, he couldn't believe some of the questions I asked. He's like, "How do you know this stuff?" <laughs> well, but you know what? I love that because because here's the truth: Fraggle Rock. You know, the, the the reason we were able to do this reboot is because it has such a passionate fan base, and and I feel like the, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because. You know, I got to to be a part of bringing this show back, but I'm the biggest fan of the original series. So, you know, I was, I was, you have no idea how many times, like, you know, in the room, I'd be the, I'd be the nerd who'd be like, actually, uh, that was established in episode. Uh, so <laughs> you can't do that because, you know, it's because, so, and, 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 and the, the group of people who were in charge of bringing this back from the writers to all the producers and everyone at Apple, there's such a um, respect for the original and respect for, <clears throat> excuse me, fans of the original. And I think that that isn't always the case with reboots, right? Sometimes it's like, right. let's take the whole thing out and start over again. And and we felt so, so strongly about making sure the fans felt, you know, that we were treating this with a lot of love and a lot of care. So, so the fact that you have enjoyed it as much as you have and you're savoring it, like, that just means more than you know. It really does. So, so because you're a fan, I think you totally get it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And and everybody's doing great work. It's a terrific show. I want to encourage all the, the viewers watching this. If you have not seen Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock, it's streaming now on Apple TV Plus. For God's sakes, get it. <laughs> Apple TV Plus is it's the easiest uh, streaming service to get. It, you, you you get it for free when you buy a new iPhone. <laughs> and there's, so much on there. there's so much on there. It's right, right. It's so it, it's uh, the other good show. Yeah, the morning show is great, and Ted yeah. Lasso is amazing. So great content on there, and uh, go check it out. Watch, watch this because because we, we need a season two. We need a season two. Please. So, <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, John. You want to tell everyone where they can find you other other than on Fraggle Rock? Oh gosh. Well, I'm redoing my website. So hopefully that'll be available soon, but uh, not yet. So we'll down the line. Uh, but I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Johnny Tartags, J O H N N Y Tartags. And, uh, and yeah, and you could, and hopefully you'll see me on many more Henson productions down the line. All right, everybody. Uh, that's going to do it for this, uh, this particular episode. Thank you to John. Go follow him on Twitter and watch Check it out. You're going to be happy if you're even if, even if you've never seen the original. Check it out. Yeah. All right, everybody. Keep wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas with the plastic feet. Keep wearing those pajamas. Tell everyone you need. Keep wearing those pajamas with the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas. Don't open it to trap. Some people call them bitches, some people call them jammies. So they can come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now we're having fun. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now the song is done. <laughs>